the world thought y'all was gonna draft Carmelo. Yeah. Like you sitting there, you oh, like boy. tell me what you thinking, like, cause like I mean, anybody with any type of sense, you yeah. just like, okay, like for you to be in that position and, and be watching that, we all watch the draft, whether right. we in the league and now we sitting there. What are you thinking in that moment? We all thought we was, the players, we all thought we was taking Melo. The, 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 we all thought like we we oh my gosh bro. um we knew darko came and worked out for us but in our minds because you know we hadn't seen darko play, right nobody knew even though we, he you was. know he came and worked out for us, but we you know we ain't seen him we seen mellow right. you know <laughs> so we was like man how do we look up and get this pick with the team we got now so we was like we we didn't like as a team say like man we get mellow this 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 but we all in our minds was like just, we get mellow and at that point it was like that's crazy lebron being mellow yeah. it was just that was what it was yeah. it was no other thought that's why i asked that yeah. it was like so it was so uh. much of a given to everybody in the world like, like even if you pain. didn't care about it, you like oh yeah lebron will be number one right. mellow will be number two so right. it was like yes yeah, so it's hard like, to watch i think how management looked at it was like they found their this future small forward in me. Let's take a chance on Darko mm -hmm. because Mehmet Okor, who we had, yeah. you know, who was super talented, we, there was, you know, obviously a chance we was going to lose him in free agency, which we did. Yeah, yeah, so, so. Right? And then, obviously, obviously, she, so it was like, however they want to call it, it was like, we'll take a chance on Darko. Mm -hmm. But, wow. um, you know, if we took Melo, man, obviously we 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 know what could have been, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we was all, we was all sitting there like, man, we sitting there in front of the draft, thing crazy. Like this, yeah, <laughs> we about to see this number two pick, and then we was like, they said Darko, we was like, oh okay, you know what I'm saying? We were shook. <laughs> but I want to say this about Darko though. Um, you got to remember Darko. I think it was, he was 17 when we drafted yeah. him. Yeah. Just turned 18. You know, obviously before the season started. Larry Brown's his first coach. Tough. All right. Come on, man. <laughs> like, the number two pick, bus, everybody talk all this, whatever the case may be. But, you know, this wasn't all on Darko. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? When you draft a guy this age, like, you know, the organization got to take responsibility in this as well. Mm -hmm. you, know, see, you see what I'm saying? And, and as well as the coaching staff and us too. I got to pause it. Man, this is painful to watch, bro. This is like opening so many it's wounds. Not even, bro, it's not again. Even, you know, it's our organization has started doing this, and it's it kept us in the dark for a long time because Andre turned eighteen coming into the league when he yep. got drafted. Yeah, obviously true. number seven had just left here, came into the league. He was seventeen, and then he turned right. eight, then came to the league, and right. they walked into some of the, the worst coaching and roster situations you can imagine yeah 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 man that's like wow that's this this is hard to, to to swallow man because not to make an excuse but this was a factor we were limited and when i say we i'm talking about the you know the pistons brass you know the front office they were limited by the technology of that time yeah there is no way yeah. darko was drafted number two overall today there's no so way. much footage there's so much access to information to to their friends to family to just there's so much the resources we have now are just astronomically better than what it was then mm -hmm. we didn't even see any footage of him except for like 30 seconds maybe worth of clips him playing in in you know 2001 and two when he was 15 16. <laughs> you know what i mean it wasn't even a lot of footage for us to go off of the things we saw looked good but we didn't know anything about him Nothing. So that alone, I just I just think about that, man. It's another what if. Like, what if that situation, what if we had the number two pick today? What if he was, what if we had the technology we have now then? It's, it's a, there's no question in my mind that we don't take him. We should have taken him anyway. But there's no question in my mind we don't take him then. This is where I can't even give, I, I commend Tayshaun, you know, for trying to give it reason. But yeah. to me, there's still no reason because Chris Bosch was sitting there too. You see what I'm saying? If you wanted to bring in another power forward, Chris Bosch was there and he was available too. You right. could have went and got Bosch. Somebody here in our land that yeah. you know can play basketball. That's you true. go overseas, you know what I'm saying, and get this guy because he practiced well. Practice? Yeah. 
We talking it's, about practice. It's funny you're right about right. No, you're right about Bosch because they they had similar styles of play too. Him and Darko, both lefties, both can face up, both can post, both can stretch the floor to about 15, 17 feet consistently. Right? Like it was just what was in between. It was just it was just the mindset, bro. That was the difference. Darko came here and had an ego. He didn't want to be riding the bench. He didn't want to be trying to do different things. He wanted to play his game and his game only. He wasn't mature. I, that's why I say, you know, we get mad about possibly having Melo. I get mad about possibly having Chris. Chris Bosch was a superstar. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Toronto days, man. He was a dog, yes. bro. Yeah. When he had the dreads, that yes. guy, man. To me, there, were, there was a point he was top five big man in the league. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. He was that good. Yeah. Even even if you had a Chris Bosch and say, for instance, when you lost Ben Wallace, you still would have had somebody. Mm, you know? That's a great point. <laughs> You see why Chris Bosh should go with she. That's a great yes. point. Instead of Nazi Muhammad, we would have had Chris right. Bosh. Instead of Kwame Brown, we would have had Chris Bosh. It was just Ouch. a dumb move. My That's a great point, bro. No, you're right about yeah. that. You doubt it made doubt. It just makes you wonder about what would have happened in 2006 or 2007 when Ben left against the Cavs. If we would have had a Bosh there instead of a Max Hill. Right. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. This makes you wonder. 2008 against Boston. We got somebody to guard KG. You know what that, I mean? In those conference finals. Moved, so it's just. That move. You're right. Years and years of turmoil. You're right. It's crazy. That's tough. That's tough, man. That's that's a great point that you made about Bosch. I never thought about that as far as him being able to, to step in when Ben left. That's a great point. Man, I oh, man. Hurt. This just brings back so much. Oh, <laughs> man. This just hurts. It still hurts to this day, bro. 20 years later, still. It still hurts, man, because I, I still feel like that was a top three worst pick in NBA history. It just happened to be us when we my, get it at my, a time it, when we have a great team. In my, it's the worst. Is it the worst I to you? Even, I, I got to put them even over, you know, what happened with, you know, the Jordan situation. He the actually was, okay. yeah, he actually was a good player. Yeah, so, he was. He just kept getting hurt. He yeah. Yeah, he just, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. this one is just, it takes the cake. If you think of the the level of damage it did for so long right right the dominoes just never stopped falling <laughs> it just kept ha it just kept affecting us and kept affect yeah it was it was yeah it was bad bro yeah Dwayne, exactly like this is you know he gets overlooked a lot i mean he wasn't he, it wasn't like he was plastered everywhere you know but if you paid attention because d wade wasn't plastered everywhere at marquette but people right. still knew he was a top five pick for a reason, the same way Bosch was. Bosch actually got picked before Dwayne Wade. He went fourth, and Wade went fifth. So just to show you how good of a player he was and recognized to be at that time. It was always the problem with that part of management during that time. It was just drafting. It yeah. was just drafting, period. We were good at one thing, trading and signing free agency guys to come here and fit together. We were great yep. at that. When yep. it came to drafting, he sucked. Yep. He sucked. 100%. 100%. That was our, our Achilles heel. That was Joe D's Achilles heel, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Dwayne, um, yeah, this this was tough because, you know, you you offer him $48 million over four years, and Chicago offers him $60 million over four years. So they're only offering him like $3 million more a year. So it's like, y'all couldn't work that out? You know, Ben probably felt like I deserved this. I brought a championship here. I'm a big part of that reason. You know, I'm the heart and soul of this team. Yeah. I would have just paid the man. You know what I mean? The nickel and diamond like that. When I saw the amount that he that Chicago actually paid him, I'm like it wasn't even that much of a difference. Y'all couldn't figure that out. Come on. So I'm with you, Dwayne. They definitely should have been able to keep him here. You pay that man. In today's in today's NBA, he's getting paid. Look how they're hitting contracts out now. The guys who haven't done nearly as much as he did for our team. Those are like bad decisions, bro. Um, if, as far as this, Dwayne, I, we're talking about number two picks. Because remember, Hakeem went first overall that year. And then Bowie went two. And then Jordan went three. So I think he's talking about number two picks. Because Bennett was first overall. So yeah, number two picks, I think that has to be the worst the worst one that I can recall. <laughs> that I can recall. I don't but, even care if it was first or second round pick. <laughs> this still is the worst pick ever, bro. Because like, I'm, we talk about championship caliber, you know, teams here you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying they won multiple multiple championships it's just the worst it kills you for decades I just 
I can't see nothing worse than that. I feel it. I think I think I'm with you because even when you think about the Anthony Bennett uh, draft, right? They also they had like three first, number one picks around that time over like five or six years. Mm-hmm. When was the last time we had a number two pick before Darko? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like we don't get those. We get when five. we get them, you gotta hit on them. We get right, we get five over and over and over again. So when you get that high of a pick, you but you can't swing and miss because you're never gonna, especially when you're that good of a team, you can't swing and miss. You can't. You can build a dynasty when you're that good of a team and you get that high of a draft pick. Talk about that transition from the old to the new. You, it just makes me so upset, bro. So yeah, man, like just because we don't ever get those picks is why this one was so bad. They were able to recover Cleveland was. You know, the guy that they took with one of those picks was a guy that hit that game winning three over Steph Curry to win him a championship with LeBron. So it worked out for them. Yeah. Cause they had multiple picks. We didn't. <laughs> yeah. And I, I gotta agree with Chris. And I think what he's trying to say with the Melo pick, the you know, the takeover wouldn't have taken place because Melo would have matched, you know what I'm saying? He would have matched the energy which we seen already between those two when Melo was yep. the Denver. Bro. Know Melo yeah. would have kept D Wade and Brian from getting to the finals. Yeah. We would have beat Miami in 06, in my opinion. We would have beat Cleveland for sure in 07. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, I'm sure he thinks about that kind of stuff. And he's the only one that doesn't have one. That's how that's how that's big great. that pick is. That's one that's one that's one decision. He can go from being the guy that has the most rings out of all those guys and just running the East to being the guy that has none. It's the worst. It, it has to make him look at Joe D like, bro. It's the worst. It makes it you it's can't argue tough. against it now at that you point. Can't. It's the you worst can't. pick ever. Yeah, bro. yeah. It's for everybody. <laughs> it's the worst. Not even just for levels. us. For everybody. I bet you I bet you LeBron and D Wade are happy that we took Darko. Yeah. Cause if we take Melo, like I said, we they not they don't have that success. D Wade don't have a championship. It just don't happen. But if so, we took D Wade, yeah. God. Once again, LeBron is not getting out of the East again. Any of those guys, any of those guys, other than who we took, even changes I the think whole L, trajectory. Even I think an L from that pick, Deuce. Because if we would have took Bosch, Melo, or D Wade, right. we would have kept Brian from, you know, winning certain <laughs> stuff. I wouldn't have to listen to you talking about he's your goat. <laughs> I took an L, so Joe D, you got to take it, bro. Hey, Joe D, you know what? On second thought, Joe D, I ain't really that bad. You (laughs) Oh, man. You know what? You're right, though. You're right. He he probably still would have got us titles because he went to Miami later when we were older. You know what I'm saying? But he wouldn't have been getting, he wouldn't have been trying to get there year after year, like you saying, early on. He would have been buried. And that's me saying, you know how I feel about him, but my Pistons would not have let him out the East, bro. It would have been worse than Jordan with the bad boys. It would have been worse. Yeah. We, we we tried to help Dark out, but could we have done more? Absolutely. But uh, a young kid of that mindset with Larry Brown, his first coach, and he just came over here yeah. he from his country. Yeah, nothing about it. Man, he head spinning, don't know what's going on, and then... You know, Darko's game was a lot of face up, yeah. you know, catch mid post face up, you know, this, this and this. And this, the staff was working on him to do other things to make him yeah. get minutes on the floor. And he immediately got frustrated. Right. 17, 18 year old kid like this is my game and you won't let me do right. it. You, trying yeah. to let me do some you know what I mean? Shit. And and, mm-hmm. and everything just kind of went bad from there. I wanted to get to this real quick. Do y'all think Melo would have been able to bring more talent here after everyone started getting Oh Yes. I think people would have seen at that point that he's a winner because he would have already won at Syracuse as a freshman, leading Jim Beheim's team to a national championship. He would have came into the league in the first couple years winning a championship and being a, a, a part of the reason that maybe not the guy but a part of the reason a big piece as to why one in college one in nba so as he starts to come into his prime and his prime and the older guys are getting older definitely guys i think would have want to play with him absolutely because they would have seen that he's a winner and it's i think that would have been attractive it's not only only that you got to think about it 
it was the Eastern Conference. It's true. He was unfortunate to have to play in the West. Great point. With the Lakers and the Spurs and those mm-hmm. teams. So Phoenix. Very Dallas. Yeah. Very yeah. unfortunate for him. You know what I'm saying? If he was playing Kings. anywhere in the East, yeah. he definitely would have fared a lot better. Yeah. It would have been fun to watch him go up against Paul Pierce, who was kind of a similar guy. But you got a younger, more athletic version of you who can get buckets probably at a higher rate going up yeah. against you. That's why I wish we could have saw him in 2008 when we played them. You know, we played the Celtics and lost in six. So, yeah, you're right, though. It's totally different. Totally different world, especially the playoffs. Yeah. Playing those teams, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a powerhouse in the Western Conference, especially back then, for sure. I'm on my way up and I'm not going to stop. We headed straight to the top in the low. I got a face tag.